Hi, my name is Tyler, and this is Aftertouch Audio. Games are becoming more and more realistic with every major release. Guns are getting more powerful. Atmospheres are more alive and dynamic than ever before. This thing that everyone seems to be obsessed about. But there's one topic in sound for games that gets very little attention, and I would love to highlight. As we move further away from keyframed animated models of objects breaking and moving towards full-scale visual destruction throughout virtual worlds, we continue to increase the dynamic ability of objects to break, bend, and collide in relation to our experiences of the physical world around us. Bottles being thrown, rocks falling down a hill, dirt falling from a ceiling, and foliage are just a handful of sounds that go into creating a sonic physics system. While you might think these are very basic sets of sounds to implement in a game, record some sounds of you breaking bottles, throw them into a sequence or random container, add some randomization and call it a day. But if we zoom out and look at all the sounds that go into creating a sonic physics system, we quickly realize that this is no small task and is partly in part to the tremendous amount of data that is required to create a detailed physics system. When planning out a physics system, there are a few things that we need to think about, and they are the type of collision. We have combat types of collision, gore, spray, impacts, crash and debris, break, drag, roll, friction, movements, rips, some miscellaneous stuff. Other factors also include object weight or mass, object shape, material type, and how many round robins the sound needs. Let's take a concrete object as an example. Concrete. Concrete blocks can be made into any size, from small blocks to a giant wall. And when they break, they tend to break into smaller pieces. So our concrete physics is going to contain small, medium, and large objects. Now, how will all these objects interact with the environment? Well, concrete can impact the ground, roll down the hill, slide across the surface, and break. All these interactions not only need their own set of sounds within different sizes, but also adequate variations to make the sound believable. And while we do like machine guns at Aftertouch Audio, we do not like the machine gun effect that you get when you repeat the same sound over and over and over. If you didn't do the math on that concrete example, don't worry, because I didn't either. But that one concrete example alone could easily get into the hundreds of sounds. When you start a new project, you usually end up with a gigantic wish list of all the sounds you want in the game. This could be weapons, ambiences, objects, vehicles, interactables, like physics sounds. This list tends to get cut down once you try to apply the asset list to your budget. Then that list tends to get cut down further once you realize how long the stuff actually takes to record, design, and implement. Then it gets cut down even further due to deadlines and how much time you have to source the sample items, which does mean we usually have to rely heavily on our personal libraries or purchase libraries, and you are usually at the mercy of the number of variations and size options that these libraries tend to offer. Now, it is no secret that I'm a huge fan of Audio Kinetics and Boom's Strata libraries. Not only do you get a large collection of libraries, but you also get to see and modify all of the processing and layers that went on with these libraries. And if you're really hungry for knowledge, you can also check out the metadata to find out all kinds of goodies like microphones and their orientation. And it just so happens that they have just released a new physics collection. I've been playing with the pre-release now for about two weeks, and while I am insanely busy, as my upload schedule might suggest, I've already used physics on two of my projects. Physics includes 23 different surfaces, all with small, medium, and large variations, and believe me, I did the math on this one. Nice. Do you need more than 23 physics surfaces? No problem, they have bullets, human and creature footsteps, human and creature movements, doors, doors, and more doors, and the rest of these libraries. Now I get asked all the time what plugins I use or what sample libraries I use and why I use them. And while I 
don't really like this question because uh, I don't I don't think it matters. When I do advertise a library or plug it on the channel, it is because I actually use it in my everyday workflow. And Strata has been an amazing collection to use. Now, they are not paying me for this review in any way, shape, or form. I did buy Strata with my own money. Uh, they just sent me the collection a few weeks before release to get my thoughts on it, and I'm free to say whatever I like about the collection. And I do have to say, this collection has done more for me than any school or course has ever done. It's almost like having a pro sound designer sitting next to you, showing you what was recorded, how it was recorded, what it was recorded with, and how it was processed. I don't really know what else you would want in a course or school. As of the release of this video, this is everything that Strata has to offer. This is the next three months of planned releases, and if any of this interests you, I highly consider checking out the Strata Collection down below. If you have enjoyed watching and would like to support me, consider checking out some of my sound effects libraries over at aftertouchaudio.com. We are currently in the process of sampling over 270 guns, but we will be releasing a lot more libraries very soon. Now, go make some noise.